Close your eyes and watch your breath all the way in, all the way out. Try to keep your gaze as steady as you can. The steadier your gaze, the smoother the breath will be. And when the breath is smooth, it feels good for the body and good for the mind. It makes it easier for the mind to settle down. If your mind wanders off, just bring it right back. If it wanders off ten times, a hundred times, keep bringing it back. The fact that you can catch it is a sign that you're improving your alertness, improving your mind, improving your mindfulness. And remind yourself that you're doing this partly for your own sake and also partly in homage to the Buddha. Last week was Visakha Pucha, seven days ago. And that was the day when the Buddha said that the, the true way to pay homage to him was practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. Then after he passed away, the Malas, who's in whose, or near whose village he passed away, held a funeral. First they were going to cremate him the first day, but then the funeral went on and on and on with a song and dance in honor of the Buddha all day long. So they decided, well, we'll do it tomorrow. And the next day, well, tomorrow. And the next day, tomorrow. Finally, on the seventh day, which would be today, they got their act together and had the cremation. The story goes that they tried to light the pyre, but it wouldn't light. So they asked Venerable Anuruddha, who was presiding over the ceremonies, what was, what was wrong. And he told them that Venerable Mahakasapa was on his way, and the devas wanted him to be able to pay respect to the Buddha before the pyre lit. So they waited. He showed up with the following, paid respect to the Buddha. And as soon as he bowed down to the Buddha, the fire lit. The, the pyre lit on its own. Then after the cremation was over, the Malans gathered all of the ashes and relics, put them in a big jar, and then set up a fence of spears around them, saying, these are ours now. Well, the rulers from other kingdoms came and said, well, he, we're noble warriors too. We should have the relics, and we should have the relics, we should have the relics. Everybody wanted the relics, and it looked like it was going to be a war. Finally, a Brahmin came in and said, look, why don't we just divide the relics evenly? And so they did. So that averted the war. And there are lessons to be learned from these events. <clears throat> One is that if you respect the Buddha, but you don't really understand what his teachings are, and if you don't practice what his teachings are, there's nothing especially powerful about that kind of respect. It can lead to more trouble. But like in the case of Mahakasapa, he represented the people who were very strict in following the Buddha's teachings. And there was something really powerful about their respect. The devas honored that respect. So think about that. We say that we respect the Buddha as our refuge. What does that mean? We have to take his qualities and really try to give rise to them in our thoughts and our words and our deeds. You don't just respect with your mouth, and you don't just respect with your attitude. You have to respect all the way through your actions. That kind of respect is powerful. So as you go through the day, not only today, but every day, Remind yourself, we live in a world where there has been a Buddha. He's found the Dharma for us. There are so many different aeons where there's no Buddha at all. You can imagine what life is like in those places. No one to teach the Dharma. But here we have the opportunity. Even with the Dharma alive, you can look at the world around us. It's pretty much a mess. And people are still fighting over things that are not worth fighting over. In the Buddha's image, it's like fish in a pond, and the water is drying up, and the fish are fighting each other for that last little place in the pond. And they're all going to end up dying anyhow. So instead of creating bad karma, we think about the goodness that we can create. And that doesn't get destroyed. That doesn't get dried up with the drying up of the pond. That goes with us wherever we go. And as I said, if you respect the Buddha, will listen to his teachings, learn his teachings, and put them into practice. That kind of respect has power, because it really can make a change in your life and in the world around you. So it's good to reflect on these events, because they all have meaning. We can interpret the meaning as it applies to our lives. And that way we benefit from the lessons that come from the past. This is one of our advantages as human beings, and so we can remember the lessons that many generations ago have learned. We don't have to keep on reinventing the Dharma wheel all the time. 
you can take advantage of what we've been taught, put it into practice, reap the benefits, and pass those teachings on through our actions, which is, again, the most powerful way of showing the value of what the Buddha taught and why we have respect for him.